and a very warm welcome to Bryson's Lancashire Restoration Co. In this week's episode, we're back in the posh end of town, redoing some more of the stonework around the front door. Enjoy the video. Very posh round here. Kind of like Millionaire's Row. So I've got to be careful filming. Be quiet. Don't want to upset the gentry. Uh, now, apart from where I'm short on bricks, I want to change that one too. Looks a bit, uh, a bit rough. Okay, right. I'll leave you with that. Let's over on to the next bit. Well, it's a week later, and what are we on with? Well, we're going to put the second coat on this that I did uh, last week before the rain started. And also, the van there, uh, the van had broke down again. I managed to fix that though, it's just a, a switch. So, ordered a new one, put it on, and it's fine now. Right, first job is wet this up. <laughs> Right. There's a tad on the cool side today. Okay, that's the, uh, the material. It's just uh, basically a, a plastering sand with uh, earth pigment, lime and uh, horse hair and dust and dust. Let's see if I can get you a better angle on this. It's uh, a bit awkward I'm up on the scaffolding. I've not got it fully boarded, so. I'll uh, give it you a better angle. Making sure that uh, you get it nice and tight onto the corners, otherwise when you come to shape it, it'll just flake off. So you've got to push it right into them corners. It was uh, it's quite badly eroded this section. And it's part of a a huge lump of stonework. Uh, very expensive to replace it all, so just for now we're facing it up, which is on about eventually having it all replaced. So that's a long way in the future, as far as I'm concerned. <sighs> As you can see there in the video, I've put a piece of wood 
up there uh, to act as a straight edge to form the uh, corner. Now this piece of wood is basically stuck there um, this is a suction from the render or mortar that I've already applied. So basically apply your mortar, wet up your piece of wood and very gently just tap it onto the fresh mortar and it'll stick. And then you can form your corner. I mean it won't work in every uh, every case, you know, if the wood's too heavy because it's too long or something like that, it'll probably fall off on you. But just a small piece like that is great for forming a corner. Now this uh, particular bit as well, it's like um, an inverted radius if that makes sense. So it's, um, it's quite difficult to try and form the shape. As you can see, it's very awkward to get in there. <laughs> we all get in there slowly. Put that down. <sighs> Open off. Once again, I'm using the uh, the long trowel um, to act as a, a feather edge, a, a derby, a straight edge, um, just to, to flatten off, uh, get all the hollows out, and form the shape itself. It's very, very awkward to get this piece. Now we've got a, an actual piece of wood, which is a, it's like a miniature feather edge uh, that I made. Um, just to try and again form that shape and flatten it off. It is awkward to get in there.
now we've got it something like we can um, put that bit of wood back on to form the uh, the corner or the Harris as it's actually technically known and as you can see just pressing it into that wet mortar and it sticks there like magic and that will give me uh, a nice piece just to work the trowel to, to form a nice square corner Now I'm applying the uh, the float to the uh, mortar. This will uh, sort of close up, consolidate the uh, the mortar itself. And of course applying a very gentle pressure, you don't want to, uh, to push it too hard, you'll push off your wood. Okay, now it's taking shape, <coughs> need it to set in a bit now before I do any more to that piece. <sighs> Chop them out of that joint. A white joint on that one. I might have to uh, jiggle it about a bit, it's eroded away. Well, half an hour has passed, uh, the magic of uh, television. So what I'm going to do now is just uh, start smoothing it out with the wide spatula trowel. I don't want to play with it too much. It's still a bit soft yet. I just want to get the worst of the dips out of it. I don't think I'm going to be able to do a lot with that in there anyway. Oh, get it as flat as I can and give it a light sponge. And that should get it. I mean, when you look at the one below it, which I'm not doing. Well, I'm not doing. You never know. I might end up having to do it. One of the most frequently asked questions I get uh, when I'm taking their stonework refacing is do I use SBR or PVA to stick the mortar to the stone? Well the simple answer is no because then you're, you're disturbing its breathability. What I tend to use is a slurry made up of um, lime putty with a very very fine sand and apply it with a uh, paintbrush. This seems to uh, work for me. And of course, you start to apply your scratch coats to the slurry whilst it's still, uh, I wouldn't say wet, I'd say damp. Right, stop playing with it. Make it worse. Very exposed around here, literally right next to the sea, which I shall show you. There's the sea, tide's just coming in. That's how exposed we are on here. Okay. 
Okay. These are not the easiest thing in the world to try and make. Not all. But we shall try our best. Oh, don't make a call that one. A bit like trying to make a Toblerone out of mortar. Get the rough shape and then uh, get them all to the right size and things. The hardest part of doing this is basically trying to get it to stick to the uh, the little sort of, well like <laughs> nodules of mortar that are up there um, and form the shape. It is very very difficult to do. I do have some uh, tiny little uh, clay working tools which I normally use for doing this kind of stuff, but um, unfortunately I've not got them on the van, so I can't use them. If anybody's got any suggestions how to do this easier, please let me know. Frustrating little things. This kind of work is no means easy. You can't do it quick. You know, if you if you think you're gonna get into doing this and you um, want to turn a quick buck, it ain't gonna happen. It's slow, frustrating work. So when you are sort of pricing up for doing this kind of work, you, you've got to allow for that, um, which makes it quite expensive. And a lot of the time, people will, will turn the, uh, the nose up at it and uh, not have it done, or not have it done correctly. A lot of the work that we get, um, it's stonework that's been painted over the years, and it's full of sand and cement mortar, polyfiller, silica, and you name it, just about every horrible product you can think of. And trying to, trying to get it back to as it was is very, very difficult. Anyway, back to this particular job. As you can see, we're uh, slowly but surely forming the shape. It's uh, it is slow work.
Well, we're winning. We're winning. Just need to tidy it up a bit. I think I'll just brush it. Um, best I'm going to get on those, really. It's awkward to do with wet mortar. So next it's going to be them. And the tide's still in. Look at that. Imagine that as a uh, view from your lounge window. Let's have a look at it slowed down. As you can see, it just does not want to um, stick. It's so, so difficult on these small areas. It's it's frustrating, really is frustrating. Um, you're on price or so you're up against it with time, but uh, time you've got to spend to get it right. It's not an easy job and uh, obviously not for the faint hearted. But uh, slowly but surely, we do uh, basically achieve our goal. So what came first? Trowel or fingers? Well, fingers. So there's nothing wrong with using your, your, your hands to uh, try and push some on there. You know, when you think back to the, uh, the old days of the reeds, etc., when it was wattle and daub, you know, you weren't using trowels, you were using your hands to daub your mortars to the reeds. Hence the word wattle and daub. Right, well, we're nearly, nearly there with this piece now. It's uh, been slow. It's, it's taken the best part of a day just to do this small area. Um, you know, there's still a lot of work to do on it yet, and still quite a bit of the day left. So the next stage is to try and get this something like flat, because below us is a, an uplighter which is going to shine up this piece of stone. So any little defects in it are going to stand out like a sore thumb. So again, what we'll do, we'll get the uh, little finger trowel out and use it like a feather edge to try and straighten it up. But obviously before we do that, we've got to finish forming this shape, which, like I say, it's very, very, very frustrating. You just think you're getting there and then a lump will fall off on you and so on. Now there is horsehair in this, but because it's such a, a small piece that you're working on, the horsehair isn't really much much use. You know, it's it's not going to hold it together the same as it would with a big area. So it's just a case of keep keep going and keep going and keep going until eventually you've got it. And once once it's done and all this is set and it's hard, you know, it'll be solid and and good to go for many many years. But it's just that initial um, well, it's sort of wet and soft and crumbly trying to. Um, trying to get it to work anyway we'll carry on you know we, we don't like getting beaten so let's do it winning now we're getting on to the uh the final stages of this very very intricate bit i'm still going to cut it to shape a bit and uh fill out all the hollows etc but it's happening it's working Right, I've cut down a bit of sponge to fit into those little uh, triangulations, if that indeed is a word. It, uh, yeah, it's it's going to be the way to finish it in there is with a, a bit of a sponge because obviously you're, you're back and forth with the trowel, you keep catching it, it's impossible to get. Whereas with the sponge, it just very finely takes those um, marks out of it. So when you look up at it, it, it looks like carved stone rather than uh, mortar that's been thrown on there with a trowel. Sponging it at the end is obviously pretty much the finish um, result. And uh, it gives you that nice sort of semi-smooth finish. Now, whenever you're doing this, you, you don't want to be doing it smooth, smooth, smooth with your trowel. Because when it dries, it will discolour and look horrendous so an open sponge finish is always best it, it kind of like it, it it mimics the stone better rather than do trying to do it smooth you do it smooth like i said it's just gonna it'll basically it looks patchy the pigments don't work the same and so on you really do need to sponge it or in, indeed brush it with a fine brush and there we go just about completed it's been uh been an awkward day that but this piece of stone was virtually gone uh, all the features have been lost right so we'll leave you there today and uh, pick you up again tomorrow
Okay, that's the scaffolding moved. You see yesterday's up there. It's uh, been a bit of a challenge getting this scaffolding up. A lot of, uh, a lot of swearing, a lot of rope, and nerves of steel. But it's now solid, it can't go anywhere. I could have gone and got uh, picked up a load of tubes and clips out of the lockup, but uh, it's just to do a little bit. It's taken me longer to and get it and put it up and it's had to do the damn job. So I've cobbled it together. Right, I'm going to have a cup of tea now after doing that. Leave you to it. Right, well, I've just given the um, stone at the top a bit of a, a scrub and I'm now going to treat it with a chemical. In fact, this chemical which uh, basically kills all the, the mossy, algae, greeny, horrible, slimy stuff. Um, already give it a scrub with a bronze brush. So now I'm going to apply some of that. Um, you just apply it neat with a paintbrush and then wash it off after a while. Right, well that's the chemical applied. And as you can see, it's starting to turn green. That's the, uh, the algae starting to come away from the stone. It right along the top there on this ledge here. Well, we've got a nice thick green pea soup on it, so I'm just getting the old um, water sprayer now and let's have a look. Now, this corner was just green with algae, as you can see, it's brought 90% of it off. And it doesn't harm the stone in any way, shape or form. It just, uh, just gets rid of that algae. I mean, you could, uh, you could go over it with a pressure washer, of course. Um, but I don't really want to do that because uh, it's not my stone. I don't want to damage it with a pressure washer. Because there's always a chance you will on old sandstone. It's, uh, it's made a hell of a difference that. And of course when it dries it'll look much neater. Now that bit up there, that was the same, that was thick green. And it's, uh, it's killed all that up there too. Now I need to pump my bottle up. Anyway, there you go. That's, uh, that's how you get the algae off your stone. Well, there you go. That's now uh, finished up top, cleaned up and repaired and pointed. It's going to drop this scaffolding now. But, uh, just having five before I do that. And then hopefully tomorrow I'm um, going to bring the, uh, the big machine and uh, power wash all the um, steps off, put some um, chemical on it. And then they want them pointing up. And then that's the stairs finished. And it's bits of brickwork to point and mess about with here, there, and everywhere. Probably another day's work left on this job. Right, we'll leave you there for today. And we may catch you tomorrow, weather permitting. Well, it's Wednesday morning. The storm hasn't arrived yet, which is great. So I've power washed, well, I've treated it and then power washed. The steps are just drying out. The old beast going today. And while I'm waiting for it to dry out, I'm just uh, cutting out this bit of point in here. Uh, in readiness for repointing it. Not doing all of it, I'm only doing this little bit here. And then it's point the steps, clean up, and that's around this doorway done. And then I've got some bits around the back I've got to do, uh, which probably be next week. However, we're getting there now with this. Hmm. Right, let's crack on.
Well, this brick here has had it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to face it up. Now, the reason I'm doing that is um, basically because at some point I'm going to come back and um, restore all the brickwork to uh, its former glory. Um, and at that stage, I'll replace this particular brick. But what I'm going to do is face it up with um, a lime. Uh, so it can still uh, obviously breathe while it's waiting us coming and doing the uh, the proper repair job. Um, it's just to make it look a bit better for now for him, uh, which we'll see him through the next year or so.
So if you look at the bricks below, the ones we've just done, you'll see they're not all smooth and new looking, they're all pitted and, and straight. Hence me going over it with the, uh, the brush to make it look like the others. Now this is a, a great way to repair a brick that you can't really change, say for example on an archway or or something like that that's going to be so difficult to change. You can face it up, but make sure if you do that you don't use a cement-based mortar because that'll just basically cause problems. It needs to be a lime-based mortar to do it. Now for a fine brush on that fresh pointing. Um, this is a really, really fine brush and it's just taking off those little burrs that are, are left on the um, face of the brick. Just tidies it up and tones it in nicely. Now if you look at the, uh, the brick that we've just faced up, it's very hard to tell that it's been done. Um, and like I said, you know, you don't want to be doing it smooth because doing it smooth, it's basically you know, your pigments aren't going to work correctly, it's going to look rubbish. But uh, as it is, it's matched in nicely and it'll do for a while. Is it alright? Yeah, she's in, daughter's in apparently.
Okay, that's that sorted. Just some, uh, just some little bits of pointing here and there to do now, around this step. And then it's clean up time. And that's how you uh, basically get round um, filling in a brick when you haven't got one. I mean, it's only temporary that. And that's brick dust, so that'll just wash off there. So don't panic. Right, next. This is the very last bit, pointing up um, the steps. You're just in the process of cutting out. Right, there you go, job done. Cleaned up, pointed up, finito, and more parcels. Right, so I'll leave you here with this one for another week. Hope you've enjoyed. If you have, give us a thumbs up. And uh, welcome to the new subscribers this week. If you haven't subscribed yet, please feel free to do so. Right, we'll see you next week. Bye.